Welcome to Fraser Downs Live. Hey everybody, I'm Norm Bohr, keeping you up on what's going down at Fraser, and as we do every week, we kick things off with the highlight reel. Jim Marino is out to prove that being Fraser's leading driver is no fluke. He proved that this past Sunday with a hat trick of wins, clicking in the second with Rock All-Star, then in the fourth with Alverna, and completing the triple with a pocket conversion aboard Angela Zora in the seventh. Red Star Brooklyn by a length and a half. Angela Zora angles out of the two hole. Then up on the outside, panic at the Disco Country Hideaway. Takes the inside route and Milbanks Piper in fifth as they wheel for home. Three quarters, 127 and three. And Red Star Brooklyn under a drive. Angela Zora is up on the outside. Country Hideaway down on the inside. On the extreme outside, here's Panic at the Disco, but Angela Zora's gone right on by. Angela Zora to win it. Dan Jukic with the call. Dan will be joining us later, as he always does, on Capper's Corner. Welcome to the uh, second half of Fraser Downs Live. And before we head into our regular feature, uh, Capper's Corner with Dan Jukic, uh, Dan is joining us to uh, talk about a, a special kind of ceremony that's taking place this weekend in honor of a very, very special racehorse. Dan, uh, tell us about Little Dude Starbuck. Well, Little Dude Starbuck uh, raced his final time two weeks ago, came home a winner in the Open, and as a 12-year-old, uh, Jerry Renkers has now decided to retire him to stud. And uh, what, a, what, a, what a career. Uh, 213 yeah. starts, 50 wins, 25 seconds, 21 thirds, and amassed over $700,000. Um, he holds our track record here at Fraser Downs in 150 and 4. That was back on September 25th of 2009. What's really remarkable about this individual, here he is, a 12-year-old, and his last race, he still managed to win by a good length, and it was the third of, of three in a, of two, or rather the second of two in a row, third including his qualifier, 53 and four, 27 and three final quarter. I mean, this this is a machine. Yeah, interesting uh, too, Norm. That uh, when he came off the qualifier, of course, you know, as a 12 year old, he needed to get some exercise and uh, won the qualifier, and then came out in that next race, and it was a dirty nose that he did defeat uh, hmm. Rock All Star by. It looked like he was beaten. Looked like Rock All Star was gonna, you know, take the money that day, but he just kept uh, coming up the inside, and he just nailed him right at the wire, and then. The, the week after that, he just goes right to the top and says, come and catch me. Rock All-Star is a bit of a hard luck horse, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he certainly is. He's done actually uh, quite well for uh, owner-trainer Bill Young, who purchased him privately uh, from Ed Hensley. Um, as you mentioned, a hard luck horse, but you know what? He's a grinder, and he's made a lot of money for Bill already. So Yeah, let's go back to little dude Starbuck for a minute, because what's really remarkable is that he, like so many other horses out west, started his career at Fraser. Uh, and it became apparent, I think, after he won the Western Canadian Derby that this guy was special. Yeah, it cer certainly was. And, uh, you know, the Rankers have kind of, he's been a, uh, a family a pet and a favorite, and they, they've kind of babied him along. And, you know, it's nice to see him take a nice mark, a 149 and three at Woodbine. For sure. And and that puts you in, you know, you're right. He went on to Woodbine. He raced with the with the best they had to offer, and he beat them. And, and you go to that mark of 149 and change, 149 and three at Woodbine. Once you break the 150 barrier as a stallion, I think you have that so much more credibility. Well, I'm I'm sure that's what they were looking at, too, when they decided to uh, stand him at stud, too. And he's had a very illustrious career. I mean, uh, why pound on the old guy? Let him go out a winner and... Uh, you know, as we say, congratulations on a lifetime of accomplishments and good luck in retirement. Yeah, he'll have fun, I'm sure. Uh, it is a touching story, too. The, the, this this ceremony that you're having uh, is going to uh, have a tinge of bittersweet in that uh, one of the owners, uh, uh, Sharon Rankin, uh, passed away. I think it was, what, last year or a couple of years ago? When was it? It was just this past summer, yeah. and, uh, she, you know, she'd been uh, – I don't know if you want to say sick, but she'd been under the weather for a while, and uh, she was a trooper, though. And you know what? There was no one louder when this horse was coming down the stretch in the grandstand than Sharon. Uh, she <laughs> just fell in love with her horses, and uh, it was a great story. Well, God bless her, and, and it's going to be a nice little ceremony. He's going to take another once around the track, I understand. I, I believe that's what he's going to do, or, or maybe head to the winner's enclosure first and then take a lap around. I'm not sure what their, their final plans are, but it'll be after post-parade of the fifth race. 
race on Friday night. We'll be watching. Let's move on to Capper's Corner here. We're going to look at uh, a pair of uh, preliminaries of the Penny Bath for three-year-old fillies in races one and two on Friday. Uh, let's talk about some of these. Uh, I'm to die for. Caught my eye. Well, I'm to die for. Of course, a lot of these have uh, come out of the uh, Fall Stakes series uh, in November, the uh, Breeders' Classic Day uh, in the in the Betty Millbank. They're trying to find their way as three-year-olds now, and uh, I'm to die for started in the Nonwares a one-two handicap last week. It was a good effort behind Judy's last, but Judy's last was meant to be, to win that I think race at Betty Millbank, but came down sick that day. What about hurt so bad on paper? Probably looks the best, uh, certainly in terms of earnings. A very strong uh, finish uh, in the uh, Millbank Stakes last year. Uh, comes back on her second start and puts up a nice little third on a really dirty day. Yeah, certainly did. And and I, I think the impressive part to me was that she came out of the eight hole. Uh, last quarter in 29, Serge uh, you know, just took his time with this uh, three-year-old daughter of Power of Art. Uh, where she had been racing in the front end before. She, I guess he wanted to see if he could braven her up, bring her from off the pace. I've actually gone to her in, in this spot here. Um, I think she uh, she's going to be okay. She had four seconds last year. I think she's going to turn that around and maybe get her first win on Friday night. Crown and Ginger comes off a win in a two- to five-year-old maidens event. Uh, and that, too, was a, uh, a follow-up to his uh, to her debut, rather. Alberta sired by as promised. Uh, like her, don't like her? What do you think? I got her in for second. Uh, I think if you look back that day, being sent off at eight to one in that race was probably a gift. Is uh, uh, she had won a stake in Alberta, but it didn't count against her, and uh, in that uh, two to five maiden handicap, and um, you know she's already made twenty one thousand dollars as a three year old uh, with the two wins, and uh, I'm sure Tim will give her a good drive around the track he owns uh, her in partnership with ian fuller of alberta mm -hmm. and i think crown and ginger it's gonna be a good battle between uh, the four and the five in there that uh, first division would appear to be the strongest let's move on to uh, the second and the next division of the penny bath uh a bit more of a question mark amongst the uh, the individuals here uh, what jumps out at you well, Judy's last is the one, I think, uh, who did win her first off the qualifier uh, in two minutes and four-fifths on a sloppy track last week. Uh, as you mentioned, defeating I'm to die for. I'm going to head, though, to Serge's horse in there, and that's a four sweet like candy. Uh, was competing in the Muriel Fornwald uh, on yeah. a sloppy track. Did finish second behind a very streaking horse, Adiga's protege, who we talked about a couple of weeks ago, right. and the Sinbin. Uh, finished uh, sandwiched in between those two, and I think Sweet Like Candy, who did go down there in 56 and 4, yeah. could be a, a tough one in there. Well, she shows good closing speed. Her uh, previous two showed a closing quarter of 29 and 3 in each. And, and you know, to get around the track in 56 and 4 on a sloppy track, uh, that says a lot. It was off by one, so call it easily call it 55. Uh, and so that says a lot for this individual. Sweet Like Candy, uh, Judy's last. Uh, you're going to throw her somewhere in your your ticket i would imagine yeah i got her in for second and i've taken the two fast lane ferrari who's been away since uh, the betty milbank uh, breeders classic races in november just the one qualifier but hey keith clark's aboard never discount anything uh, the masters on that's true and and when a horse you know makes thirty three thousand in its uh, two-year-old season you got to figure that you know a horse with that kind of class can probably come back at first asking and and show up somewhere on the ticket you and i uh, either great Minds think alike or fools seldom differ, but I'm with you on this one. So <laughs> let's move on to uh, the fifth race on Sunday. Uh, 15,000 claimer with allowances and a fairly competitive field. What do you like? Yeah, it's certainly, it's, it's certainly a great race. Uh, of course, we've got uh, the newcomer from Northlands Park, feeling flush with Travis Cullen aboard. A good effort last week behind, well, River Lass and Phone Terror. It says 20,000 claiming condition, but that was the open. And, um, you know, this horse was very competitive in there, now drops in for 15. And I think she could do in there, but she's going to have some competition from possibly the six Art of Arts and the rail horse, uh, Baradol Hanover. Ladies will put on quite the show. As usual, Dan, pleasure to have you with us. Thanks very much, Norm. And, uh... Good luck for you for the weekend too. Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be counting my uh, counting my money at the windows after my afternoon at Fraser. Let's hope so. And that's going to do it for another edition of Fraser Downs Live. Fraser Downs Live is a presentation of Fraser Downs along with HRBC. 
in partnership with Ford Communications.